So you went to your local feed store and you saw the little baby chickens and you couldn't say no. Now what? Well, it's kind of hard to pass up these little guys when you see them in the store. <laughs> Even if you're hatching them at home, it's still kind of difficult to walk by those uh, big silver bins and not grab a few to bring home to add to your <laughs> collection. So today I'm going to be talking about what you'll need to do before you bring the babies home. Or if you made an impulse buy, what you need to hurry up and do whenever you get home. <laughs> so let's talk about that. First off, you're going to want to set up a brooder. A brooder is where these little baby chickens are going to be spending the first six weeks of their life. So you got to make sure that it is big enough, warm enough, and has all the things that they need to survive. So number one is they need feed and water and heat. You're going to want some sort of bedding in your brooder. I like pine shavings. Uh, you can use hay and straw. Never use cedar. It's really bad for their respiratory system. That goes for pretty much all livestock. So you can use pine shavings or hay or straw or anything of that nature. You want to get it warm. A lot of people use these heating lamps. They are dangerous. There are so many people that catch their barns and houses on fire using these heat lamps every year. They're cheaper, but they are more dangerous. You have to be aware of whether they are secured properly, um, the type of brooder you're using. Um, some people like to use t like plastic totes, and you can, but you have to make sure that you're not mounting that lamp onto that tote or it's anywhere near that plastic because it can melt and catch fire and nobody wants that. Um, I have mine zip tied to my metal rack back here uh, and I took the curtain off that window. You just want to keep things away like it's a fire hazard. It's a major fire hazard. You want to be sure that your brooder is at least 90 degrees the first week and you're going to decrease that by five degrees for the next six weeks by just elevating the heat lamp or pulling the brooder away from the heat lamp. Also, it is a good idea to have a cooler side to your brooder so that if they get too hot, they can go to the cooler side and a warm side of the brooder so if they get too cold, they can go over there. You can tell if your chicks are cold by them huddling up together. You can tell if they're too hot, if they're super spread out and panting. Um, so just keep an eye on how they're acting. If you do not want to go with a heat lamp, they make brooder plates, heating plates for baby chickens so much safer. It is a little bit more expensive, but that is your peace of mind. Um, so it's just like a heating plate, almost like a heating pad, and they get directly under it. The, the, the baby chicks will get under it and get warm and then they'll come out whenever they want feed and water. You want to be sure that it has high sides if you're doing it in a, in a closed off building, in a house, in an extra room, in your garage, something like that. High sides so that they're not going to jump out or um, I've got mine right now in an old metal uh, toolbox off of a pickup truck and I've just got it covered with like uh, grates from a from a dog crate so that they can't fly out. You just want to make sure that they have enough room, they can't fly out, and nothing can get in. Now, on to feed and water. With their water, when you first bring them home, you can make something called magic chick water. And all that is is regular water with vinegar and a clove of garlic and either honey or molasses. I like to use molasses because it does have those extra vitamins and minerals in it. You can do that for the first week or two. I like to add apple cider vinegar. You want to make sure it's apple cider vinegar, not, not just any other vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is best with the mother. I like to add that to all my animals' water. Not cats or dogs, but 
I like to add it to chickens and goats. You can use any kind of chick starter. A lot of people choose medicated chick starter because it does have medicine in it to keep the chicks from getting stuff like coccidia. If you're raising ducks and geese along with baby chickens, you might not want to use the medicated starter because it's not as good for the geese and the ducks. I will say this also, if you are raising geese and ducks with your chicks, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have an extra source of niacin in that feed. So to get that little boost of niacin for your geese and ducks, which they do need, uh, you can use brewer's yeast. And I found brewer's yeast pretty cheap at, or nutritional yeast at my local like Amish store. They had them in little bulk packages. Uh, so remember that if you're you're raising a mixed flock your ducks and geese will get the water way dirtier than the chicks that's what i wanted to talk about next any of these animals are going to get their water and their feed dirty but we want to try to lessen that uh, so you want to have a water that's like either slightly raised off the ground and they come with the little feet and you also want to make sure that the water is shallow so that they don't fall in it and drown because they are sometimes little dumb animals <laughs> or you can make one of these it holds the feed and the water up off of the ground just a little bit and right now where I've got some little tiny babies in there that can't really jump up there I'm sure they could but <laughs> I'm just making sure I've got the feeding water over there uh, this keeps them from getting their water dirty I just gave them fresh water just a few minutes ago they've already gotten it dirty so I gotta keep that updated quite often throughout the day you can hang their water you can put it on something like this this also catches all their poop and stuff while they're sitting there eating this is really handy all this is, is just a few pieces of wood and um, some rabbit wire stapled on top of it with the water when you bring them home or if you're ordering from a hatchery if they're not already drinking water or if you've hatched them you can dip their beaks in the water show them where it is you just pick them up dunk them in and they'll be like oh that's the water that's what I need that's where it's at and so that helps them find it grit all birds need grit it is very helpful for chicks you don't have to go and buy the grit at the store if you have access to sand uh, if you have a creek you can just go and get a scoop full and throw it in there uh, watch them whenever you give them the grit the first few weeks because if they're eating more grit than they are feed you need to ration that out uh, but it helps with digestion, especially if you're raising meat birds, you want to feed grit all the time. It's going to help them fill up, it's going to help them digest their feed better, and it's going to help them grow bigger with less feed just by getting everything digested properly. There are a few things that you should watch out for when it comes to raising chicks. They get something called pasty butt and I'm sure that if you go to one of these feed supply stores and you look at a few you will see I mean it's exactly what it sounds like their poop is all crusted to their butt and it gets bad enough it stops them up they can't use the bathroom and they will die. So if you have a chick with pasty butt, you can soak their little butt in warm water, not cold. You don't want to chill them off. Um, you can just take a wet rag and you don't want to pull and you don't want to rub too hard. You just want to soften it up and get it off of there. If you pull, you will hurt them. You'll pull their feathers out. You could pull their vent out and that's not good. You just want to get it soft and get it off of there and then rub their little behinds with Vaseline or like aquaphor or something like that. You can also add a little bit of cornmeal to their feed and that will help stiffen up their poop a little bit. Not too much, but you know, just enough. There's also something called failure to thrive, which I have one in here that I have dealt with that. She's very small. She's the same age as my almost three week old chicks, um, but she is like half their size. She was the size of these other little chicks that I bought. She's catching up though. First few days, she didn't really eat, she didn't really drink, she struggled with the pasty butt. I got her cleaned up, cleaned up. I got the molasses in the water. I, it was immediate, just a couple hours after I gave her that molasses water that she perked up, started eating, and was doing better. You can also use um, Nutri Drench. Uh, you can add probiotics to their water. There are other remedies like that. There's also something that I've dealt with called Rye Neck. Um, it's not always evident right in the beginning you can see it 
a few weeks after you get your chicks and what will happen is they'll start kind of stargazing turning their neck and you won't be able to turn it back that's really difficult to treat you can treat it if you catch it early enough with certain vitamins with nutri drench uh, there are other remedies out there but usually it's something that is just a slow and painful death they basically starve to death because they can't eat so that might end up being something that you have to terminate or call them for how long are you going to keep your chicks in a brooder like this i have mine in a spare bedroom i know that's not ideal for a lot of people um, if you have a closed off back porch you don't want to keep them like outside where animals can get them and also where anywhere that has a draft you can have outdoor brooders as long as they are predator proof especially from stuff like rats which can get in there and kill all of your chicks you want it to be predator proof you want it to be warm and draft free those are the things that, that you absolutely have to make sure if you're keeping your chicks outside or on a porch or something like that. You don't want them to get too cold. They will die and obviously if a predator gets to them, they're going to die. You keep them in a brooder for six weeks. You can keep them in a brooder for less if it is the summertime, um, if it's warm outside, or depending on the breed, like if you're going to raise meat chickens, it's more than likely going to be the summertime they're gonna grow faster than a regular chick that'll be more like three or four weeks depending on the breed so you have to do your research there well let's say that you're just watching this video because you want to get some chickens i will say this if you want to get chickens for eggs that is great i'm so excited for you but this might be a bigger responsibility than you're ready for it might just be easier for you to go to the store and buy the eggs because they they do come at a cost um eventually you can offset the cost by hatching and selling the chicks you could sell eggs if that's not really that profitable you could look up the margins on that especially depending on your area uh there is a market for them but you might not make any money you might just break even but if you want chickens as a hobby, as something you're passionate about, or you're just looking for fun family pets, then I'm so excited for you. And let's let's talk about where to get them. Obviously, you can get them at your local feed stores. You can buy them from local farmers. You can check Craigslist, Trade Times, wherever you're at. You can order them from online hatcheries. If you get them from hatcheries, you wanna make sure that you're not ordering them when it's super cold outside, and you have to get at least they have a minimum. They have a minimum when you buy them in the feed supply stores too because they have to hold enough heat before you get home so that they don't die or in the mail. So it is a good idea to wait until warmer weather to get your chicks shipped in the mail, but it is possible to get them now. Just be weary because a lot of people will go and pick up dead chicks at the post office and that's not fun. You can also hatch your own chicks, which I have a whole playlist of videos on hatching chicks. You can go check that out. I'll post a link below. That is super fun, but when you're hatching chicks, you don't know whether or not you're gonna get a hen or a rooster or a pullet. Um, a pullet is a female chicken who hasn't laid an egg yet but you don't know what you're going to get and if you get a bunch of roosters you're gonna have to figure out what to do with them you can find incubators online farm supply store this one back here got a tractor supply it's the um, farm innovators i got it running right now <laughs> i'm hatching chicks for a bunch of people so it is a lot of fun but you have to you know be aware that you could end up with most roosters you're not always going to get it's just the luck of the draw hatching eggs you are going to pay more for than regular eggs you can find people who are selling eggs that if you know they have a rooster you can just get regular eggs and try to hatch them but normally they're going to cost money and you can get hatching eggs shipped to you in the mail however that is also luck of the draw the post service they they get all shaken up and it's not the best for them you can do it it's done all the time but you have to be aware that what you're buying might not make it through the incubation process also never count your chickens before they hatch even if you have 100 percent fertility they're most likely not all going to make it to hatch day and even if they do they might not make it the past 
couple days. Chicks are very frail. And that should be all. Just don't forget to love on your chicks. They will love you back. Because at first they might be a little hesitant, but chicks definitely, chickens are definitely really great pets. Silkies make really great pets. They are very small. They're very cute, but they're very sweet. They make really good mothers. They lay very small eggs. You can get like a high intensity layer, like a leghorn. They're still really good chickens. I love leghorns. That's like the industry, the egg industry standard. They lay a really big white egg and they are super just all around really good chickens. I have found that leghorns are a little frail. They tend to get sick more than others. I love the big fat chickens <laughs> because if you have a fence and they try to fly, the big fat chickens like say a light Brahma or an Orpington or a, um, a barred rock, those are really big birds. They're not really gonna be able to fly very far. But they those also have really docile personalities. If you go for something like the random bantam assortment and you don't know what you're going to get, whether you're going to get a hen or a rooster, because I will tell you this, if you're going to go pick out chicks at a feed store or if you're buying chicks online, it will say either pullets or straight run or hatcheries choice. I've been seeing a lot of hatcheries choice. Usually it says hatcheries choice and it doesn't specifically say female or pullets on the side that's going to be straight run which means it's a mixture of male and female you don't know what you're going to get and these little bantam roosters um, from what i've been told i've never had a bantam rooster but i've seen some really hilarious videos of them just being absolutely ridiculously mean and they're tiny like this big but they are just the uh, ruler of the barnyard so just be <laughs> aware of that whenever you're picking out your chickens. So do your research on the breeds of what you might want. Um, if you're getting chicks for egg color, usually they'll have a big description on the side of what color eggs they lay. That's as easy as a Google search, right? If you see something called an Easter egg, -er, they're going to lay colorful eggs, either green or blue or sometimes pink. If you want a really dark chocolatey egg, which is really popular right now, I love them. They're Moran's, Black Copper Moran's, Mystic Moran's. They're all going to have different variations of the dark brown. Uh, something like the leghorn will lay white eggs. Uh, there are other blue egg layers, like a true blue uh, whiting, um, something like that. And then there are just brown egg layers. Just to do your research on your breeds and figure that out if what you're wanting is a colorful egg basket. And then, whenever you get your chicken flock established, you can breed them and you can end up with uh, all kinds of different color eggs. You can make, a, they have something called an olive egger, which you take a dark brown laying hen and, a, and an Easter egger, like a green egg rooster, and you mix them together and their offspring will lay olive colored eggs. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed telling you about it. My name is Mina, if I didn't say that before, and this is Markwood Homestead. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.